Hello, welcome to my very first tutorial on language assessment. In this first tutorial, I would like to address the most common terms in language assessment. Okay, so here we go. Hello everyone. Today, I'll be talking about most fundamental concepts in language assessment. In this tutorial, yeah, there will be some important points that I will discuss. This tutorial is very useful for students who are taking language assessment class or for beginning language teachers who want to refresh their memory. My name is Taufik Effendi and I'm a lecturer at Gunadama University. Okay, so now these are the five points that we'll be learning today. The first one is the assessment itself and then test, validity, reliability and washback. Here comes the first slide. Assessment is a umbrella term. It includes a wide range of efforts, initiatives and attempts. I tried to summarize all the definitions from experts into three main definitions. The first one is Assessment is any ways to help learners achieve the goals. As teachers, we certainly have goals that our students will have to achieve. To make sure that students will achieve the goals, then we will do many things. We'll give easy explanation, examples, we put them into groups so they can discuss deeper, they can help each other. We give quizzes, assignments, tests, so that we know their weaknesses, so that we can help them uh, to understand better, yeah, to achieve a higher result. So these are called assessment to help students achieve the goals. Second definition is any ways to help learners gain maximum knowledge and develop maximum skills. Again, as teachers, we'll do many things to make sure this, to let learners or students gain maximum knowledge and develop maximum skills. Yeah. The third one is Anyways, to evaluate the progress and achievements of learners. Okay, so assessment is really all about helping students, improving students, and finally monitoring their learning progress. It includes a wide range of teachers' initiatives. An assessment and teaching are just indispensable. They are integrated. There are two types of assessment in terms of their formality. Informal assessment is spontaneous and planned and prepared. Yeah, for example, oral feedbacks. Sudden quizzes can also be informal. Yeah, everything that is spontaneous uh, initi initiative, it is called informal assessment. And then formal assessment is assessment that is planned, prepared, uh, scheduled, and for certain, it's not spontaneous. The examples are midterm tests, final term tests, scheduled quizzes or assignments, yeah, so they are called in uh, they are called formal assessment. Next, in terms of 
the timing, there are two types of assessment. The first one is formative and the second is summative. Formative assessment is done before the end. Done before the end. So teachers can still provide feedbacks, teachers can still give further explanation, teachers can still provide more examples, and students can learn more, can still have the chance to study harder. Yeah, because the process hasn't stopped yet. So everything that is done before the end it's called, is called in uh, formative assessment. Summative assessment on the other hand is done at the end of a semester of a program of a year. Yeah, the objective is to sum up, to summarize the learning, to see the final result of the whole process. Examples of the examples of summative assessment is final term tasks, final assignment, uh, script C, thesis, and so on. Okay, now we're coming to test. Test is a part of assessment. Test is one instrument of an assessment. Yeah. Because when we do assessment, we can do observations, we can give assignments, we can ask students to write journals, we can ask students to write diaries, to do presentation, and finally we can ask students to do tests. The objective is again to know how much students are learning, how much students are achieving and to know their strengths and weaknesses so we can have more time to help them gain better results. According to the purposes, there are four types of tests. The first one is language proficiency test. Of course, it is to be able to know people's language ability or proficiency in a certain language. The examples are IELTS, TOEFL, MELAP. MELAP stands for Michigan English Language Assessment Battery. The second is placement tests. As the name suggests, it is to place people according to their ability, patient, interests, and so on. So the test is done to be able to know uh, the ability, their strength, and their patience, so we can place them accordingly. The third is diagnostic tests. Of course, it is to diagnose people's strengths and weaknesses on a certain domain. If teachers want to know students' strengths and weaknesses on a certain lesson, then they can do a diagnostic test. The last one is achievement tests. Yeah? Achievement test is to know how much students have achieved, how much learning the students have made. Okay, the examples are midterm test, final term test. Next, according to their scoring, there are two types of tests. The first one is norm reference test. It is just like common tests. Yeah, multiple choice tests short answer question test true false statement test yeah the test that doesn't require any scoring criteria so you can simply calculate based on the norm the norm is a hundred for the highest score yeah let's say if we do 100 items tests in multiple choice test format and if we make let's say 10 mistakes then our score is simply converted into percentile rank and we become 90 yeah percentile rank percentile person it, it is a hundred okay so that is norm reference test but criterion reference test on the other hand requires criteria and certainly it doesn't follow the percentile rank norm 
yeah but it normally uses bands or levels IELTS for example uses a range of bands starting from 0 until 9 as the highest band for each band it has criteria and the description that sets the standard for example if we do IELTS speaking tests and we want to get seven for example then we have to take a look at the description for the fluency pronunciation lexical resources and grammatical range and accuracy we have to check the description how uh, band seven is qualified for yeah make sure we can be qualified for all these descriptions so that we can get seven for IELTS okay so that's criterion reference test now we're coming to test according to language proficiency concept there are two types discrete point test and integrative test discrete point test is based on the idea that language skills can be broken into smaller parts yeah so examples are listening test only reading test only pronunciation test only and so on yeah specific skill test but integrative test is based on the idea that language skills are just integrated they're not separated they're not isolated yeah so test takers will have to demonstrate more than one skills the examples are dictation tests if we do dictation tests we'll have to incorporate all possible skills like we have to use our knowledge about the wording the spelling the structure of a test tenses grammar and so on all right so that was the types and definitions of assessment and tests as one instrument of an assessment now we're coming to the qualities of assessment here we go